Hello, fellow sleuths. Thank you for joining me on this dark, cold, and foreboding night. We stand here at the bottom of the hill from Minor Manor. Just down this trail, we see a young couple who has gotten their Chevy Impala stuck in some mud. They are on their way to Minor Manor because they are recognized as the best detective duo west of Chicago. What they don't know is that the rich old prankster that sent for them has much more in store for them than your average mystery. His own murder case. Over the next six episodes, Sam Van Bogart and Mara, his bride-to-be, will be dealing with vampires, stolen cutlery, whoopee cushions, ex-boyfriends, greedy relatives, and of course, murder. Sam and Mara are gonna need to stay sharp and not blow their tops if they wanna get out of this place alive. Honey, we should have turned back. I can't see the supposed footpath. We don't know if this leads to the estate or anywhere for that matter. The telegram said it was urgent. They want Iowa's greatest detective. That's not me. You. You solved all my toughest cases. You cracked the case of the insincere ingenue. You were the one that discovered that that shade of lipstick couldn't possibly have come from the victim's twin sister's makeup kit. You figured out that those were still prints, not high heel prints outside the Baxter estate. Your detective work led to the capture and conviction of those escaped circus midgets, not mine. You ought to be the detective. You and your male ego. I won't hear such talk. Imagine me running down a suspect in these heels. Honey, you think we should have turned right back there? Oh, now you listen to me. You asked if you should take a left, and what did I say? I said right. And what did you do? I turned right. Wrong. I said right. Right. So I turned right like you told me to. That's not right. You asked if you should turn left. Right. I said right. No, left. Wait, look, that must be it. Where? Up ahead, atop those crags, underneath those clutching trees. I can't see a thing in this rain. Wait for another flash of lightning. You'll see. Go ahead, knock on the door. Yes? This is Sam Van Bogart, the famous detective, and I'm his fiance. Are we at the right place? No, ma'am. The right place used to be a quarter mile down the road. However, it burned down under mysterious circumstances. You could hear, hear old man Wright shrieking as the flames consumed his burning body. <laughs> no, uh, Mara meant to ask if this is the minor manor. Yes, sir. However, we weren't expecting a Van Bogart. But we were invited. Invited, Mom? By Major Minor. But he's deceased. He sent for us. For Sam. Shortly before his mysterious death. Um, may we step inside? My, my fiance is drenched. Certainly, sir. I see a light on in the house. Be careful, will ya? Show a little respect. I'm wet and I'm cold, Hans. You want to ride inside and put your wine in? What's that? Look on the roof. Somebody's about to jump. That's a gargoyle. Look on the roof, will ya? Gargoyle. Look, I'm sucking on a breath mint right now. What about that monster on the roof? Not your breath, dummy. Gargoyle, up on the roof. Huh? You know, a gargoyle. Uh, to disguise the rain spout, they designed a granite figure with bat wings and a hideous demon from hell. What for? Decorative purposes. Must have been way before Martha Stewart's time, eh? Let's go home. 
You see the water running out of the demon's mouth? So that's why they call them gargoyles. Gargoyles. You know, like that movie, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I never heard of that movie. Really? Are you telling me The Hunchback of Notre Dame doesn't ring a bell? Let's go home! This place is creepy. <laughs> it's a fine old Tudor house. I got a Tudor house, but it ain't this creepy. You don't have a Tudor house. I've been to your house. It's a Cape Cod house. My house has a front door and a back door. Yes, so does mine, but it's not a Tudor house. No. No, it's a Georgian house. Remember, I had you over for a hamburger helper? But it's a two-door house! A Georgian house can't be a Tudor house, no matter how many doors it has. You're kidding. Look, not all Tudor houses are two-door houses. So if my house has two doors? Look, some Tudor houses have three doors, and a Cape Cod with a front door and a back door is not a Tudor house. Look, I've got two doors! Listen, hear that? They have one this? There ain't no such a thing. You watch too many movies. Why do we do? <laughs> Don't panic. There's no such thing as vampires. Well, what if there is? You've seen enough movies to know. You, you drive a stick through its heart. Barry, you know I don't know how to drive a stick. I flunk drive the sand. Be brave and hide. Who's at the door, butler? James, sir. Mr. James, well, I'm very glad to meet you. No, sir. I am James. James Wentworth Baker is my name. This is Sam Van Bogart. And the young lady is Miss... Um... Mara. Pleased, I'm sure. And this <clears throat> gentleman is Mr. Forrest Howard, married to the Major's granddaughter, Darlene. Well, if you're another one of the heirs, you've come to the right place. Oh, no, sir. As I was explaining to these two, the right place is just a quarter mile down the road, However, it burned down under mysterious circumstances. You could hear old man Wright shriek. Yes, yes, well, you've come here just in time. Whoa. No offense, old man, but none of the Major's relatives here shake hands. Nothing personal. Coronavirus? No, ma'am. You see, the Major built his empire on the novelty business. Squirting flowers, funny dog poop, pepper gum. And joy buzzers. Joy buzzers? You see, the old man had quite a cruel streak. Was testing out different joy buzzers on everybody, different voltages. Got to where nobody was willing to shake hands. Especially Miss Old Lady Wright. Why was it especially hard on Madame Wright? She's a bit naive. She could never tell fake dog poop from real. Oh, careful sitting down. Sitting down? Whoopee cushions. The old man was always hiding whoopee cushions. What an, um, unique place. Nice bear skin. <coughs> ah. Excuse me, James. Yes, Mom. I couldn't help noticing that curious tube in your hand, another of the Major's novelties. Kaleidoscope, perhaps? No, ma'am. I was polishing the Major's favorite blowgun. Favorite blowgun? A prized possession he received on his trip to the Congo, given to him by the grateful king of a tribe of cannibals. Really? Yes, ma'am. You see, the cannibal king was choking on a missionary. Acting quickly, the Major administered the Heimlich Maneuver, saving the Cannibal King's life. In gratitude, he not only decided not to eat the Major, but he also gave him this prized ceremonial blowgun. I shall return it to the blowgun room shortly. Blowgun room? Yes, ma'am. Just beyond the thumbscrew gallery, across the hall from the Spanish Inquisition collection.
Fix me another drink, would you, Butler? James, sir? We've already been introduced. Say, did you see my wife down at the side of the road near the end of the hairpin turn? Your wife? She's out there in the store? I had a blowout. She ought to have had the tire changed by now. Your wife is changing your tire in the storm? Aren't you concerned? Nah, I reminded her to tighten my lug nuts. Why aren't you changing the tire? <gasps> Italian cashmere? Sam, go out and help that poor woman. Don't go out there, pal. She must be done by now. You're gonna catch your death of cold. What about your wife? Oh, she has a bad cold already. Awful cold. Couldn't get any worse. What a callous beast. Oh, so you've met my wife. James, who's arrived? Is it the hearse? No, ma'am. May I present the Van Bogarts? This is Miss Harrison James, the Major's attorney. An honor. I've heard so much about you. The Martinson malicious murder trial? Yes, well, some of my clients are acquitted. <laughs> May I present yeah. the Major's cousin, Mr. Thomas Harrison. Hello. Nice to meet you. Uh, this is Mara, and my name is Sam. Hello. Here for the reading of the will? Uh, why, yes. My condolences on your cousin's passing. Oh, thank you. This is some weather we're having. A warm front having pushed up from the Gulf has been trapped between cold air masses, moving down from the northwest, and another pushing down from Maine. The warm air mass is trapped, occluded, and pushed upwards. Results in heavy rains are expected for the next 10 to 12 hours. This will be followed by three to four hours of heavy and foreboding fog. You're a weather forecaster? Uh, meteorologist. However, did you know? He's a detective. James, the door. Okay. Not you, Ms. James. James the butler. It's about time somebody answered this door. Hell of a night. Hey, how long is this storm supposed to last? A warm front, having pushed up from the gulf, has been trapped between cold air masses moving down from the northwest and another pushing down from Maine. The warm air mass is trapped, occluded, and pushed upwards. Resultant heavy rains are expected for the next 10 to 12 hours. This will be- Mara, darling! I'm so glad you made it, despite your coolest friend. Supposed to be a detective, isn't he? I see, still see that you're slumming with the wrong crowd. Sam, you remember Paul, Paul Butler. Ah, oh, come on. Let's be civil. Temper, temper, Sam. I gotta hand it to you. You quit the way you solved the case of the insincere ingenue. At least you know I pop perfume. Let's face it. You smell. I should have smelled you a mile away. I see you've already met. Met? Why, me and Mara had a passionate fling. That was a long time ago. I can fondly remember those evenings. Act, you bastard. Paul, stop. Or in the coat room in the back of that diner off Highway 49. Sam, you're joking. Tell Sam you're joking. If Mr. Detective here needs to find fingerprints on Mara, I'm guilty. <laughs> Well, who is it? I can't see for the trees, Forrest. Pardon, sir. I see out the window a figure approaching. My wife. I hope she remembered to bring the luggage. Who's out there, Butler? How should I know? Not you, Butler. I mean James. I'm afraid I wouldn't know either. Not you, Miss James. I mean James the Butler. It's difficult to see through the rain, sir, but it appears to be two figures and a hearse. <laughs> <laughs> Heavens, what is it? It looks like those men are fending off an attacker, sir. James, open the door. The butler will get it. That's what I meant.
Ah! Hurry! Go! 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 A mysterious telegram from a dead man. An unexpected run-in with an ill-fated admirer. A cold-hearted husband with a missing wife. A butler a little too enthralled with a neighbor's unfortunate demise. And two undertakers scared out of their minds. What lies behind that door is just the beginning. Join me again for episode two, because what comes next is a mystery to me. Hi, I'm Marty Adkins, president of Knoxville Area Community Theater. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of A Mystery to Me as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. This online presentation is one way CAACT has adapted to the current pandemic. The safety of our audience, volunteers, and actors is a top priority for us. Speaking of the pandemic, CAACT has been affected just like so many other businesses and community organizations. No live performances have meant no income for CAACT in 2020, yet we too have the ongoing expenses that have to be covered. If you've enjoyed this presentation, I hope you'll consider making an online donation to CAACT at the address shown below. Thanks for joining us on for this episode, and watch for our, our Facebook page and website for announcements about this and other projects. We hope to see you soon.